up this morning, um, which says is a little bit earlier today than it normally is, so we can get started right away. Uh, things to consider, the first thing to consider is why do you mow and how do you mow, okay? Um, do we mow just because it looks good or do we mow because it's a safety issue? And your answer should be it's a safety issue, uh, but it does make uh, look uh, it does make things look a lot better and cleaner, and it keeps the brush down. Okay, so sometimes uh, I know sometimes when budgets get tight, uh, sometimes mowing goes out the window. So you need to just prepare uh, your people at making those cuts to uh, understand that actually mowing is a safety issue. Okay. So the agenda for today is, yep, the owner's manual, you should have two of them. You should have one for uh, your tractor and you should have one for your mower. A good walk around inspection. And we're gonna touch on some mowing safety thing, uh, issues and maintenance. All right, uh, yeah, I say this, time and time again with owner's manuals, they need to be with the piece of machinery, uh, not in the desk drawer or not back at the facility, okay? And um, like most people, we have them, we don't look at them until something goes wrong or we can't figure something out. Then we go trying to find where we put the manual because it's not in the machine, okay? So uh, yeah, you, you know, you need to, to read them and understand both manuals, okay? And what will be in the manual? What do you think you're gonna find in the manual? Feel free to use that chat pod or jump right in, unmute yourselves. It's still quiet, but we're still having our coffee. Yeah, that's okay. We'll go to the next slide. You know, uh, a mentor told me one time after you ask a question and nobody answers it uh, in seven seconds, then it's time to uh, move on to the next slide or you give the answer yourself, okay? So yeah, you're good. we're gonna start with a walk around inspection for the tractor, okay? And, and what are you gonna check? Well, you're going to check the, the, the usual stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, you're going to check the usual stuff. Make sure it's got the engine oil. And make sure the battery terminals are clean and tight. Uh, your hydraulic fluids, you're going to check, make sure that you have enough hydraulic fluid. And you're going to look for fluid leaks in the, in the normal places, okay? Uh, Tire pressure, yep, you're gonna check your tires for, make sure they have the proper pressure in them. And you're gonna be looking for defects such as cuts, gouges, and that sort of thing. You take, uh, check your lug nuts. You don't have to take a wrench and check them every time. Uh, the best thing to do is just look for rust bleed or shiny metal. If you see rust bleed or shiny metal, then you wanna get out your wrench and check them because there's probably gonna be uh, a loose lug nut. Make sure you got enough fuel for the day and make sure your glass is clean, all right? Uh, sometimes mowing can get dusty. Um, dust gets on the glass, sun, sun shines on the glass, then it's hard for you to see, okay? So keep your glass clean. You wanna check your slow moving vehicle symbol, make sure it's on the machine and readable. And if you didn't know, uh, the color red fades quicker than any other color. And that's what your uh, slow moving vehicle has on it. So check it out. If it's dirty, clean it off so people can see it. Okay. Uh, fire extinguisher, yeah, it depends on uh, the mower, the tractor, and your town policy, whether you have one or not. It's a good idea to have one. Uh, first aid kit, same, same idea on the first aid kit. Uh, if you get a, a rented mower, like a lot of you do have, uh, they may not be a first aid kit, but that doesn't prevent you from putting one in there and taking it with you. And it's always good to have a first aid kit wherever you're working in case something happens. 
okay? And do you have a checkoff sheet, a sheet that you can follow, all right? And that just makes it easier uh, for you not to forget anything. You can just check them off, check them off, check them off, all right? Okay, walk ground inspection for the mower. What are you gonna wanna check on your mower? Okay, check the mounting bracket on your tractor. Yep, to loose nuts or missing bolts and cracks to the frame, depending what type of mower you have, whether you have the uh, brush hog type or you have uh, uh, a boom mower over the fence type mower. Okay, uh, those two walk around inspections would be a little bit different, but basically the same. Okay, you wanna check again your hydraulic fluid, uh, half to three quarters full in the tank, Check your hoses and fittings for leaks. And uh, I've mentioned before already, don't be grabbing any hoses with your bare hand. Put on a, a thick pair of gloves or use some cardboard and paper to look for a leak. All right, you don't want uh, to get hydraulic fluid in your body. It has a tendency to uh, destroy thumbs and fingers and you end up with out thumbs and fingers. So please be careful. And if it's a boom mower, yeah, you're gonna check the boom for cracks. Okay, you're gonna look for loose nuts on the mower deck. You're gonna check the mower deck for cracks or dents. Your mower deck guards, uh, make sure they're functional. And if they need to be replaced, please replace them. That's what helps to keep uh, what you mow from flying all over the place. And you're gonna look for accumulated grass, um, especially on a rotary mower, a brush hog type mower. And because we're gonna be discussing uh, riding mowers today as well, um, you mow a deck for uh, accumulated grass on the mow, uh, riding mowers as well. All right, you're gonna check the blades. Are the blades cracked or bent? Are the mount, mount, mounting bolts tight? Okay, and then I just kind of went through that kind of quickly, but uh, did, we, did we miss anything? Okay, do you check things that uh, I might've missed? Okay, I can tell you if, if your blades are bent, uh, you need to change them before you even mow, because if you don't, uh, it's gonna wobble and you're gonna ruin your mower. So check them out and don't just replace one blade. If you replace a blade, replace both of them at the same time so that the machine is balanced, okay? And the greatest dangers when mowing, yeah, is rollovers. And it doesn't matter if uh, it's a riding mower or, or a tractor, okay? Uh, they do happen. They should never happen, but they do. Uh, you try to mow more than really you should because uh, you, know, you take pride in what you do and, and you want it to look real good. So you, especially on a slope, you, you tend to uh, mow a little bit more than you should, okay? And getting caught in moving parts. There's a lot of moving parts uh, with the PTO and everything on the uh, brush hog type mowers and, and everything else. So. Be cognizant of that. Uh, don't don't do any checking on your uh, tractor and or your mowing machine if they are running. Shut them off, please. Runovers, it happens. You know, oh, it ain't happened to me. Well, if you're not careful, it may happen. Okay, and it can happen real easy. Like I said, you, if you're gonna get out, check something, shut it off. A lot of people will just take and uh, put the tractor in neutral and then get out of the tractor. Well, guess what? It can start rolling and run over you, okay? So don't do that. Like I said, shut it off. Hitching and unhitching your mower attachments. You can get hurt doing that if you're not careful. Uh, obstacles, obstructions, overhead wires. That's what you need to be cognizant of, okay? So you help mitigate those issues by Walking what you're gonna mow and looking for obstacles and obstructions and checking for overhead wires. Okay. 
And I know what you're going to say, well, gee, you know, what well, one one's already two and a half, three feet high, and I'm not going to go out and I'm going not going to, I'm not going to uh, walk it. Well, the best time to walk it is in the spring when the grass isn't high, okay? You can see everything, you can pick stuff up, or you can mark stuff, all right? And if you mark something, it's going to be there when the grass gets tall, okay? So I'll go early in the, in the year before the grass has started to grow real tall. Walk what you're going to mow, okay? Uh, just, uh, yeah, okay. Transporting, yep. Um, some people, oh, gee, Russ. See, that happened. That's too bad, okay? Transporting, yep. Be careful when you transport. Uh, some people, especially riding mowers, packs and wreck people, uh, you transport your mowers. So there's a proper way to put them on the trailer and there's uh, an unsafe way to put them on your trailer, okay? And your mower height shouldn't go any higher than 13 feet, six inches. And your work zone traffic control flaggers. Yeah, a lot of you uh, just put your mowing signs out. If you don't put your mowing signs out, you should start putting your mowing signs out to let people know you're mowing, okay? And be cognizant that stuff thrown from your mower can travel 300 feet, all right? And depending where you are, if you're in a section where the road is narrow, you got guardrail on both sides, it's advantageous to have a flagger, all right? But you need to explain to the flagger he needs to stay back a minimum of 300 feet from where you start mowing. I know there was an incident uh, in New Hampshire DOT quite a few years ago where there was a flagger there and uh, they were starting to mow behind the guardrail. They had an over-defense mower and they were starting to mow behind the guardrail. And what happened was the mower hit a broken delineator post that was laying there. There again, nobody walked what they were gonna mow, all right? And the mower picked that up and shot that out and it went right into the flagger's leg, okay? So there again, don't take chances. Get out and walk, mow what, know what you're gonna mow and keep your flaggers back at least a minimum of 300 feet, okay? Yep, uh, the overhead power lines, uh, everybody kind of knows they're supposed to stay 10 feet away from uh, power lines. Actually, it's a function of how much power is going through the, the line. I cannot check, I don't know, just by looking at the line. Some of you do that have worked for tree crews or Someone's explained to you uh, how much power is going through the line, but at least uh, 10 feet of minim minimum away with your boom mowers, okay? Now you wanna check uh, for guy wires, the uh, water and gas shutoffs if you have them, all right? Um, they're supposed to be, if you get a guy wire coming down, they're supposed to be uh, marked by a yellow um, detective thing. Uh, I don't always see that, okay? Uh, Phone pedestals, yep, they're here, there, and everywhere. Uh, some of them are active, some of them aren't, but it doesn't matter, you don't wanna hit them and, and knock them over or, or whatever the case may be. And yeah, watch for drug-related items, okay? There again, how important it is to walk what you're gonna mow, because you don't wanna be uh, mowing and then have your mower hit uh, a meth lab that somebody is thrown out the window and you're really gonna be in hot water then, I mean, it, a lot can happen, all right? Yep, we talked about uh, check for overhead obstructions, uh, mowing on a slope uh, greater than 11%. I'm gonna tell you now in, in the videos later on, uh, some states uh, don't want their people mowing on any slope greater than three to one, okay? And that, that helps cut down on the uh, rollovers, all right? So whatever your policy is, keep that, in your mind, all right, three to one slope, okay? And you gotta watch out for the pedestrians and, and the bicyclists and everything, okay? And watch the angle of your mower head, whether it's a boom mower or whether it's a, uh, a brush hog type mower, okay? Watch the angle and make sure that it, you set that stuff up correctly uh, when you hook the machine up. Yeah, weather, uh, be cognizant of uh, lightning and rain. Um, yeah, if you're mowing late in the season, you could get a little bit of snow, I suppose. I know there's 
at least one community that uh, they do their mowing in October and they claim it's better for the people running the mowers because the leaves are coming off and they can see better. Okay, so but what your policy is, you're gonna mow in the rain. Yeah, some mowing doesn't work very well in the rain. Some of it you might be able to get away with. Uh, lightning, it's a good idea if you're having a, a lightning storm to uh, just don't mow, just shut right down, okay? And with the weather we've been having lately, uh, especially this past weekend and the heat, heat stroke and dehydration, be cognizant of those. Okay, hopefully the mowers that you're using um, have air conditioning in them. If you're packs and wreck people, there's probably not an air conditioner in your riding mower. So, but uh, be cognizant of heat stroke and dehydration, and drink plenty of fluid, and have your teammates kind of check on each other. Okay, know, and know the, know, know the signs of what heat stroke is. Okay. Um, so, you, you know, you don't want people to get uh, really sick or end up in a hospital. So, there again, get with your team members and go over that. It's a good, uh, it's a good talk to have first thing in the morning when you head out to mount. A little safety get together. This is what we're going to do today and this is what we need to be cognizant of, okay? And mowing heavy brush. Be careful when you're mowing heavy brush. Um, it could do damage to your machine. Um, a lot of times, you try to get it and your machine's really not made for it, but you try to get it and you end up breaking your machine. So it's not uh, not the best, okay? When brush is heavy, it's time to get out the saws, all right, and start cutting it down. Or get you a, a big brontosaurus mower like uh, they do the power lines with, if you wanna spend the money to do that to cut brush, all right? And what I call overhead mowing and uh, or sky mowing, I lot of, see a lot of people that have the uh, the boom mowers. They'll uh, go down, and if you got limbs in the way, they just kind of reach up with the with the mower and and clip them off. Uh, be careful when you do that. You, you know, especially if there's a lot of leaves, you don't know what's there. It could be a wire that you don't see, or you know, the limb could come down and and hit your tractor. All right, I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just telling you to be real careful when you do. And then usually when you first do it, it kind of looks kind of lousy, scabby. You got limbs hanging here or, or shreds of bark hanging there. You know, people pick up on that real easy. So be real careful when you do that. Mowing backwards, okay? Uh, don't be mowing backwards. Mowing speed, yep, okay. Um, especially packs and rec people have, a, they, they really fly with them little mowers. They, they go right along, but just be cognizant of that. A uh, highway mowing, yep, it should be uh, in a low gear and going slow, especially if the vegetation's tall. You need to be able to see the best you can. And you, you know, the slower you go, the easier it is to pick up on stuff. Um, yeah, just be careful when you speed. Invasive species, they're everywhere. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't, we were going to add a section uh, to this PowerPoint about invasive species because of the uh, COVID-19, uh, that didn't come to fruition, uh, at least for today anyways, but we're gonna be uh, doing a, a webinar type thing on invasive species uh, later on in, in the fall and we're going to add it to uh, to this PowerPoint. There's a lot of stuff out there. Um, there's quite a list of invasive species in New Hampshire, probably the one people know the best. Uh, a, bit, a bittersweet and your Japanese knotweed, okay. Uh, Japanese knotweed is, is everywhere, all right, and so you know you need to be cognizant of that. Uh, debate whether to mow or not mow. Um, just be cognizant if you do mow it, all them little shard type things from the uh, Japanese knotweed will turn into another plant. And, and you know, uh, public works over the years has been notorious for spreading that. Um, early on, we didn't know. Nobody told us anything about invasive species and not to do this and not to do that, okay? So 
yeah, we're going to add that to this. And hopefully we can cut down on moving some of those invasive species around. Uh, also, there are some plants that you don't want to mow, i.e. Uh, milkweed, because of butterflies and things like that. So uh, we're going to be uh, discussing that as well uh, when we get this all put into our uh, PowerPoint here, okay? Uh, yep, I don't see them anymore. It used to be open cab tractors for boom mowers. Uh, I believe every boom mower I see now is, is, uh, is a closed cab, and that's for the safety of the operator. All right, you need to be cognizant of poison ivy, um, especially if you're walking what you're going to mow, and even if you're not, all right, if you mow poison ivy, then you get that oil on your on uh, your mower and everything, and then you get out to check something, and you grab it with your hand, well, guess what? You may end up with poison ivy. That can happen. Bees, yep, sometimes you run over bees' nests. Some of them are in the ground. Some of them aren't, are not, all right? Just be cognizant of that. Uh, be cognizant if a crew member is, is allergic to bees, all right? Um, with the HIPAA laws today, he doesn't have to tell you he's allergic to bees, but I don't know why he wouldn't. It's for his own protection, okay? So if you do have someone that's allergic to bees, uh, learn how to use the EpiPen so you can help them out if need be. Okay, it's just that one little added added step in the morning when we're going out. Okay, um, yeah, I know it, it happened at New Hampshire DOT. Uh, he was using the push mower. He was mowing actually was mowing at the shed, and uh, he ran over uh, a bee nest that was in the ground, and he got stung. And um, he did get his epipen out, and he gave himself one shot. One shot wasn't enough. All right, and he had. He was lucky someone from the crew came back to get something that they'd forgotten and saw, see what was happening and he called the ambulance and he ended up in the hospital. Like I said, even that one Epi, Epi 10 shot wasn't enough. So uh, be cognizant of that. It, it can kill people, okay? Yep, any piece of equipment, three points of contact on entry or exit, you come out the same way you go in, facing the machine, don't come out forward and jump down or don't come out forward and get your heel caught on the step and then down you go and then you get a broken this or a twisted that or a sprain that all right I, I say it all the time okay and make sure uh, what you're mowing is uh, strong enough to hold the tractor some slopes can be pretty sandy okay and you need to be careful with that uh, some slopes are a little bit wet and they can be a little muddy be cognizant of that as well and yeah, uh, make sure there's no air in your hydraulic system. You do that just by uh, cycling first thing in the morning with your with your equipment, okay? Tall grass should mow and uh, yeah, half first pass, okay? There again, that depends on you what you're going to do, okay? Sometimes it's advantageous, especially if you get a brush hog type mower, uh, to mow it down in uh, half first, okay? And you should always leave uh, six to ten, six to twelve inches of uh, material. Now, six inches is, is pretty good, all right. So you don't want to leave it. You don't want to cut it down any lower than that. And uh, but anywhere from six to twelve inches is a good mowing height, okay. A boom and mower, yep. Uh, boom mower can prevent your tractor from tipping over if you're quick enough to get it down, okay. But you don't want to get to that point, okay. And you need to become familiar with all the controls, especially if it's a new machine or a rented machine. You know, if you had never run this before, and sometimes they just deliver it, and there's no instruction from the company on what's what or anything. All right. So become familiar with it, check everything out, and be cognizant of the medications you're taking. That's just like anything else. You know, um, if it can make you drowsy, this, that, or the other. So, okay. All right, maintenance of the tractors, yet what and when to maintain.
Well, you're going to go by the owner's manual. Is that correct? Of course. The owner man is going to tell you uh, when to change the oil, uh, what to put in for oil, okay? You want to lubricate all your fittings with grease, okay? Uh, oil change and filters when it's time. Check your tires and rims. And there again, lug nuts. Uh, check, make sure your radiator is not plugged with uh, leaves or, or whatever, okay? And the protection screen for the operator. Uh, if you got an enclosed cab, you're okay. And make sure your lights are clean and your glass is clean. Make sure you're, uh, like I said, I spoke to you earlier about the, uh, uh, the slow moving vehicle symbol. Make sure that's clean and visible. And warning lights, yep, that's just the repeat. Uh, all filters, okay, that includes your air filter. Sometimes if it's real dusty, you need to check your, your, your air filter and you may have to clean it. Um, there again, you'd find that information in the owner's manual and there's usually a gauge somewhere that tells you when they're dirty, okay. Again, check your battery, check all your belts again, and just your overall condition of your tractor. Maintenance of your mowers, yep. There again, you're gonna go by your uh, owner's manual that comes with it, and you're gonna just check what you normally would check on your uh, early morning walk around inspection, okay? Don't be shy on grease and stuff. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. If moving parts aren't greased, then they tend to break, okay? Uh, replace, your, uh, replace your blades per your manual, whether you get a flail mower or you have a rotary mower. Um, I know uh, uh, a brush hog type mower, you replace the blades. You should be using a torque wrench when you torque that uh, nut and bolt back up. And usually after you've replaced your blades, uh, after the first eight hours, you should check to make sure that that blade is, is still uh, tight. Dads on the mower again, yep, check them, make sure they're okay. And there again, did I miss anything? If you read the manual, then I didn't miss anything. And uh, we'll continue with uh, uh, writing mower a uh, safe operation. You need to dress properly, uh, long wear pants and tight fitting boots, shoes. Uh, most of you uh, have to have uh, steel toed boots or composite uh, steel uh, toes, uh, boots and or shoes. So uh, make sure you wear those. Some places allow you to wear shorts. Uh, be careful uh, wearing shorts on getting poison ivy, poison oak, um, things like that. Uh, be careful of dangling jewelry, okay? Uh, you should wear uh, safety glasses or uh, face shield, safety goggles. Definitely earplugs or uh, the uh, earmuffs, protect yourselves. Protective gloves are a good idea to have. Uh, make sure your footwear is, uh, is non-slip and do not uh, operate under the influence of uh, Legal drugs that uh, may make you drowsy, this, that, or the other. And you already know that you can't operate anything under the influence of alcohol. So, but be careful of medications. They can make you drowsy um, and have uh, a bad effect for you on real hot, hot days. Okay, hearing, there's a rule of thumb for hearing protection. Yeah, if you have to raise your voice significantly to be heard by someone three feet away, after leaving a noisy area, your ears feel plugged or you hear a mild ringing or whooshing noise that goes away after an hour or two. When you start your car in the morning, the radio is so loud from the evening before that you have to turn it down. So uh, those are all things to indicate to you that, uh, yeah, you need to wear your earplugs and uh, anything over 85 decibels, you need to have uh, earplugs or earmuffs. Okay, uh, safe fueling procedures, yeah. Always shut your engine off and wait a little bit for things to cool off. And never smoke or have an open flame near fuel. Use only approved fuel containers and prevent static 
sparks which could ignite fuel by touching the fuel nozzle to the machine before. You know, uh, I didn't know. I had never seen, uh, heard that be done before. But all our gas cans today are plastic. So touching plastic to metal isn't going to probably do you anything. Uh, the biggest thing you want to do is uh, shut your cell phone off, okay? Uh, there has been incidents at fueling stations where a cell phone has uh, caused a spark, and uh, it's not a good thing, okay? And you want to leave room, uh, if you're fueling a can, uh, for it to expand a little bit. And the same with your, with your mower. Don't top it off so it spills out all over the place. Leave a little bit of room for expansion. And if you do spill anything, clean it up. Okay, uh, driving to the work area, avoid quick maneuvers. Using brakes while turning can cause rollovers. Gravel makes situations more hazardous. Use caution crossing highways or intersections and obey all traffic laws. So just be careful if you're driving from point A to point B, okay? Um, pay attention. Mowing machine, whether it be a, mow, a tractor or a riding mower, is a one-person machine. Always has been, always will be. Okay, always start the machine from the operating seat, uh, especially a riding mower. My riding mower here at home will not start unless I am sitting in the seat. And that's a safety issue, so you don't hurt yourself starting it from the ground. Okay, uh, drive slowly and cautious. Uh, avoid mowing in reverse. Uh, you can't see as well going backwards. And never dismount from the equipment while it's moving. All right. And never get, you never want to get off whether you go to a riding mower or you have a, uh, a mowing tractor. You never want to get off uh, unless you uh, put everything down on the ground. If it's got a bucket on it, put the bucket down, shut it off before you get out. Just don't put it in neutral and think you're going to be okay. That's when issues happen. And you want to never use a mower, uh, whether it be a riding mower or uh, uh, you're mowing uh, with a brush hog or a, a boom mower, unless all the shields and guides are in place and work the way that they're intended to work. You need to clear uh, the debris sometimes, okay, especially if you got wet grass, it has a tendency to uh, clog things up. Uh, especially with a brush hog type mower and, and a rotary type, even if it's a boom mower, if it's a rotary, sometimes that the, the wet grass will stick and starts to plug stuff up. The riding mowers, de definitely. So there again, shut the mower off, okay? I don't know if you need to go disconnect the spark plug, that's kind of overkill, but at least shut it off, maybe take the key with you and you know, you don't want to work on any piece of equipment when it's running. Some other safety tips. Yeah, don't work on wet grass if you can help it. And uh, be careful if you get stuck uh, and you have to push or pull your mower, okay? Depends where, you at, where you're at, whether you can uh, back out or if not, if not, then you need to pull it out. So just be careful. Okay, uh, identifying heat related illnesses. We've had some real hot weather lately with high humidity. Okay, so uh, yeah, heat related illnesses occurs when working in the high temperatures and humidity, we all know that. Uh, symptoms of heat exhaustion, well, dizziness, lightheadedness, headache, feeling weak, fatigued, easily irritated, clammy and moist skin, pale or flushed Skin. And uh, if heat exhaustion is started, uh, be careful. It can turn into uh, uh, heat stroke, okay? And the symptoms for that is uh, hot, dry, red skin, not sweaty, okay? If it's really hot and you're not sweaty, uh, that should be a f your first indication that something's wrong, okay? So uh, you may become disoriented. You may be confused. Your body temperature could 
get greater than 105 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's that's dangerous. That means you need to cool your body down. You could have convulsions, and you could ultimately become unconscious. How do you prevent heat-related illnesses? Yep, you hear, hear it, you hear it all the time. Okay, drink plenty of water throughout the day. Okay, uh, it's recommended two bottles of water at 32 ounces per hour. Avoid soda, coffee, tea, and alcoholic drinks. Uh, they dehydrate the body. Avoid large meals before working in the heat. Wear light fabric clothing and take frequent breaks and plan the heaviest work for the coolest part of the day, usually 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, just be careful if it's real hot, you know. Okay, lightning, yep. Uh, we do get uh, thunderstorms with lightning and you should automatically shut your uh, mowing down, okay? So some precautions to take, shut off and put away your stuff, okay? If you cannot take cover inside a building, go get to a low space. Um, stay in your machine, I would say, your mowing tractor. If you're on a riding mower, get off the riding mower and get inside or get down real low in a pickup or whatever. Keep away from tall, tall objects uh, such as trees, towers, fences, telephone poles, and power lines, bodies of water, and metal objects. If someone is struck by lightning, it doesn't happen often in New Hampshire, but it does happen, uh, you want to call 911. Check to see if they are breathing, check for burns on their body, and move the victim inside. Operating on slopes, you got to be careful operating on slopes. Uh, you want to let the clutch out slowly when starting up a hill. You may even want to back up the hill, and that's that's the best way if you're going to mow if you're going to mow slopes is to back up the slope, not drive up the slope. Okay, and if you track the stats, the tip steer front wheels downhill. Keep the tractor in gear while going downhill. Don't put the clutch in or put it in neutral. Okay, know the maximum slope on which your equipment can be safely operated. More and more places, uh, a lot of DOTs um, won't allow their people to mow any slope greater than three to one, unless they have specialized equipment. And that's just a good thing for you to know, okay? You can roll over really quick, okay? Uh, zero to 15 degree slope, yep, riding mowers or tractors, mowers are approved for these areas. Uh, 15 to a 20, 22 degree slope tractors, tractor mowers are approved in these areas. Uh, 22 degrees and up these areas are mowed with string trimmers, okay, push mowers. So if it's more than 22 degrees, do not be using a riding mower or a mowing tractor. Um, and within five feet of a drop off, a buffer zone is maintained. Only string trimmers and push mowers can be used inside this zone. Okay, don't, what they're saying is don't get too close to a drop off, so you don't want to tip over. And here's just a quick way for a slope indicator. Uh, to make it real simple for you, uh, just go to your, your foreman or your select board and, and buy a slope meter. They're not, they're not that expensive. You can mount it in your tractor and then you'll know exactly how steep the slope is that you're mowing and you can mow accordingly. Um, and you won't have any rollovers. Okay, up, up, up or down or side to side across, yeah, walk mowers, side, side to side, and your riding mowers, like I said, up and down if the slope is too steep. Okay, and always, you should back up, okay, and drive down. And you back up, especially if you have a uh, brush hog type mower on the back, because if you drive up, you get that extra weight on the back, and it's pretty easy for your front wheels to come right off the ground if you don't have a bucket on the front of your tractor. Okay. If you're stuck, yeah, be careful. Um, don't try too hard to get out. Don't try all kinds of fancy stuff. If you're stuck, just let somebody know, and they'll come and get you and uh, pull you out. That's the best thing to do. Shut down the machine, yep, you want to idle the engine down, allow it to cool, even a riding mower, especially your uh, diesel mower tractors, lower all, all attachments to the ground, wait for the blade movements to stop before leaving the seat, 
Shut off the engine and remove the key when stepping away from the machine and always clean your mower after use. And that's it. And we thank you for attending today. I did want to say that, uh, you know, ask yourself some questions about mowing, okay? The first one is why, why am I mowing? Why do we mow? Do you mow because you always mow? Or do you mow for a reason? Do you mow because it looks good? Or do you mow because it's a safety factor, okay? And mowing actually is a safety factor, uh, especially it, it opens up intersections, uh, it mows stuff away from signs so people can see them, and it also it looks good as well, okay? You can go to our uh, website, and uh, the NL TAPA website has a whole ton of rev uh, tailgate talks on mowing, and it's a good place to go, uh, to do that uh, tailgate talk first thing in the morning on, on mowing safety, okay? Uh, if you need technical assistance, you can let either myself or Marilee know, and we will uh, endeavor to do that. And thanks for coming today, and don't forget your evals. All right.